All right, so I think we're set. Yeah, I had to do some some change to my usual setup. So I I think we're fine right now. Yeah, we are. All right, so thank you guys for showing up. Um, so um, for the last couple of weeks, we've been trying to talk about how to automate stuff in Python. And basically, um, we just look at what the general workflow is, because for some people, um, their, their workflow revolves around the internet, just, you know, um, come to work in the morning, um, log into some maybe um, workflow application that's done, you know, on a browser. And from there, they check some mails and probably spool one or two reports. And so that, that has been some people's workflow, you know. So um, that's, that's the way it is for some people. For some other people, their workflow in, um, just revolves around do something maybe um, usually it, it could be maybe create a file um just a second let me restart this kennel okay so um for the last couple of weeks for the last um, three weeks we've been trying to look at the various parts of your system that you know interact with whatever automation you're doing for now we are still looking at the software parts of you know the automation process because I mean, you can have a Python script that when you open your laptop and you just click run, it will go activate or interact with a hardware in your system, maybe the camera on your laptop or your something, one of the hardware basically that is attached to your, your machine and start up some processes and run those processes actually from end to end. So there's, there's a whole world of amazing stuff you can do on Python. And that's what we're looking at this whole period because what we want to do is we want to ensure that at the end of the day, um, you you reduce the mundane work that you, you do. So like for me, um, I, I used to work in, in um, one of the largest banks in Nigeria and my routine was the first hour when I come, I have to log into a particular module then that we call risk asset management module and I'll have to um, spool some reports. When I spool those reports, then I get to, you know, tabulate them in, spread, in a spreadsheet. Then, you know, so it was just repetitive. My first one hour every day was repetitive. If I had, if I had the know-how, if I knew how to do it in such a way that I could knock off that first one hour, then I gladly would have done it. So it was until I left the system and I started learning about Python that I discovered, oh, I would have automated away at least the first one hour of my day, such a way that, that when I just come in, I just log in and just run a Python script. And it just runs the whole stuff that I do because it was basically mundane, um, you know, spool this report from this place. Um, the, the risk assets module was like a, it was a small, you know, it was a small database that was built on SQL. And what we used to have then was um, uh, every, uh, every of the branches transactions were spooled into that risk asset model in summary form. So what I, what I did was I had to go pick out, you know, our branch risk asset balances, pick out some other branches risk asset balances, you know, plot it in a chart that shows where we stand against other branches. Then we plot it also in a chart that shows our, our daily targets against, you know, um, against what we, what we were, what we are doing actually. Then also, you know, do some form of time series analytics, just show, you know, just this is the trajectory. Have we been on an upward roll or just a downward roll? You know, stuff like that. So that was my daily, first thing I had to do in the morning and looking back right now, I just wished I knew Python. All I would have just done is to write a script that will reach into the database with pandas, 
So from the time the database comes up um, into Pandas, I write something again that would, you know, arrange formats. Then I'll bring in Matplotlib. Matplotlib will do the chatting for me with Seaborn. Then I would also invoke another module called the SMTP library. That's SMTP lib. This one we'll have here. What that one would do is it will take all the analytics that I've done from my pandas and I've sent as this, uh, maybe in Excel file or in a CSV file. And it will automatically just attach it to an email and just send it to all my bosses who needed to have that report. And it will also, I will also set up a watchdog um, and we're going to look at those modules right now. What the watchdog would do is it probably would be watching for my file or my, it's, it's on, 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 it's, I would use, I would use maybe a Python script to continue monitoring my emails in such a way that the moment an email drops and once that email comes in and it checks the email and sees, okay, maybe the email is from one of my bosses because I probably would have put in the, their, their email addresses inside the, the, the program. So it's going to check, okay, so is this email from Michael West at socialsoandsobank.com? And if it is, does it have this as part of the subject? So if he has this and has this as a subject, obviously because most times when I send it to them, they usually reply, all right? So they, it's going to be re, you know? So if the, if the, if the response, if the sub, subject of the message was like a forward or a reply or something, this is what you should do. So if I set up the Python script to say, when they send that up, you know, download the attachments or whatever it is that is in that mail they sent to me, put it into some so file, move it from that file to another file, then trigger something else. So I can automate my whole life for the first one hour or even two hours of my day because that first one to two hours involved a lot of back and forth. Okay, so why um, could you just send, you know, another report that, for that explains this or that so if i can just know the routine i could just automate it away so today um we're just going to refresh our minds on what we did the first time all right um the first time we we talked about the os module and the uh, there was there was this other module that um goes with the os module it's called the shuttle module that's the system high level util or some people like to call it um uh, yeah, system high level utility modules, all right? But some people like to call it shell utilities, whichever one works for you. But the, the people who wrote the model did not tell us what it is. So we just assume that it's either system high level or shell utilities. Basically, what it does is it's, it's, it relates with the shell of your system. So that's basically what it does. So um, usually what we'll do is to import OS and um, we, we import that shutil module and then we import this, all right? So um, because most of your work is going to revolve around the web and files or directories, those are usually the main places that we you know, want to look at. Now, there's something called robotic process automation in Python. For example, um, if when I come in every morning, I have to log into um, maybe QuickBooks or whatever it is, you know, do some postings and stuff like that. Now that is not automation. That's just that's not just um, ordinary automation. It's called robotic process automation. Robotic in the sense that it's it's repetitive, so we can automate it away, you know, and make a robot that would start looking at. So um, let's just say every morning when I come to work. I have to log into QuickBooks. So let me see where my QuickBooks are at. All right. Um, let me just see. I have to log into QuickBooks and okay. So let me just log into this QuickBooks. All right, or Minitab or something. So maybe one of these softwares. Um, when I log into this, uh, let me see. So I log into this app. Um, then I, once I log into the app, I generate um, whatever it is that I need to generate, maybe a, a, 
maybe a a report of um the last day's sales or something you know so yeah so that's that's a problem because aha uh -huh. okay so i think i i crossed installation when i was trying to do something i know i was playing with something on quickbooks so i think i just messed up installation i have to restore the app All right so i could just wake the application up you know do stuff and then so that's called robotic process automation um what it does it's it takes whatever process you're doing and then it just tries to you know automate it so what we are going to just refresh our minds again is on um on the use of the os model first now um if you look at my desktop you will notice that there is currently no um, there's currently no folder that is named um, Pi Auto, all right? This Pi Auto. So there's currently no folder that's named Pi Auto. And so what I'm going to do is I want to create this folder on my desktop. To create this folder on my desktop, I have to use this um, OS method called make there as an mkdir so what it does is if i let me just um, run this okay so let me just insert um this if i just say os dot make okay so i i have two options the first is the singular option when i just want to make one folder the second one is when I want to make a folder that has subfolders on the inside. All right. So that's what I do when I use this one. OS dot make theirs. All right. So let me just copy this um, here. And remember, you can stop me at any time. You can ask any question. That's why it's a live class. You could just, um, if I do something that is not very clear, you could stop me and ask what I did. And I could, I'm going to have to go back and explain it gladly. All right. So um let's use the first one make there all right now if i open this bracket and i do my shift tab because i'm using a notebook it brings out first the the, the parameters that is expected of me to have in this in this um method that i'm trying to use so it's telling me that this method creates a directory that's what the method does it creates a directory all right and the first thing it requires is the path. The path is like the address where you want that directory to be created in your system, right? So here I have taken the luxury to define the path as this um, as this uh, on my C, all right? User slash UGO slash desktop slash by auto. So. This is where I wanted to create this part. So I'm just going to copy that and let me just put that here. All right. So I'm uh, just going to write that as part. Okay. So the next thing that this this thing wants it is just um, the mode, which 511 is the default mode and um, directory FD, which is known, but those are basically not usually necessary. The main thing that the system requires is the path, all right? So since I already have defined this thing as my path, I will just come here and um, I will just come here and I would say make directory and supply the path as the parameter, all right? I could even change this to pi auto sample, all right? So it's just, you know, have some variety so when i run this now you would notice that when i go to my desktop you will discover that python has created this folder called pi auto sample and it's blank there's nothing inside of it all right so um that's what that um, does but if i want to create um uh, if i want to create a, a file all right that has a folder that has a subfolder on the inside, I use the make theirs, all right? So 
I have defined a second path, all right? So have this just be called, okay, pi also new. That's the name of this folder. And then the subfolder on the inside will be 2014, all right? So when I run this right now, and I go to my desktop, you'll see that there is another folder that's been created called Pi Auto New. And inside of it, there's another folder called 2014. All right. So that's how it works. I'm just trying to run through all of this so that I can bring you up to speed and then we can go into today's material. All right. So um, make theirs creates a folder and a subfolder on the inside, and then remove their removes the folder if it's just one. But if you have a folder and a subfolder like we have in this path two, then remove theirs is the right thing to do. So if I do this, let me make sure it's closed. Okay, it's closed. All right, so if I um, remove, if I just use run this remove there, it would have deleted, yeah. So it's deleted that folder for me. And when I run the second one right now, Again, it would remove that other folder. So you notice that all the folders have disappeared, all right? So that's basically how folders, how this OS stuff runs. OS interacts with every part of your, um, your system. So I could decide to create a new file, all right, with the, the OS, um, with, the, with one of these methods here, you know, so if I want to create a new file, um, I would use this file.open, all right? And I would ask Python to run this. You know, this open is actually a method. It's an inbuilt method in Python used to create a file. So um, I'm asking Python to create this file, um, my, my py.txt, all right? Inside this folder, which is this. So that's what I'm asking Python to do. And then I'm using the append method, okay? So this append mode means if the file already exists, go down into that file and write. So that's why I'm using this write method to say, inside this write, this one will get to Walmart, we'll buy Oreos, and then write the next, we are coming from, we're coming home from Walmart when we create a space, and then close the file, all right? So I'm going to run this. Now, when I run this, you're going to notice that there is an error. And the reason for the error is because the file does not exist, all right? This is by auto new 2014. And why it doesn't exist is because we removed it here because I mean, we deleted it. So I'm just going to run uh, this make theirs again so that the, the path can exist, which is this, all right? Uh, then I will now run this other one and it wouldn't give me an error anymore. So let me run this now. Okay, great. So if you now look into this, you will discover that this 2014 has a text file, which is what I asked the system to do for me here. Create a text file, all right, which is this my pi.txt. And if it exists, if your exists, the system is going to append. That means, okay, it exists. I'm going to, whatever it is that we need to write, we'll have to go under, all right? So that's what um, happens here. So if you look at, if you look at that, um, let me just go to my desktop. Inside of this folder, you're going to see what has been written on the inside. So you see, when we get to Walmart, we'll buy Oreos and, we are coming home from Walmart. So that's basically how these things work, all right? So from there, um, I just close this and close this, all right? So you can always read this up. And we have we, the, the video of the this first class we did, Python Automation 1, is already on our YouTube, um, is on our YouTube channel. So you could always watch it and just catch up so that we don't spend a lot of time doing everything we did on the first day. So let's quickly run to the material we have for today, um, which is the watchdog module. 
And I really thought um, we could, you know, do the watchdog module and then probably touch the SMTP and um, I, I map lab with maybe a couple of one or two other, you know, libraries like that today. Maybe we could even make an intro for beautiful soup for web scraping, but for now, um, I think we'll just hold on with that. And let's just touch this watchdog module, all right? So I believe we all um, probably have dogs, uh, very wrong assumption to make, <laughs> all right? I used to have a dog many years ago, but hey, a dog went to dog heaven. So um, yeah, so what a dog does, especially if it's a watchdog, is that it monitors your environment, all right? For any form of movement, that's what watchdogs do. And the moment um, they discover any form of movement, they are trained to give a particular response. So if it's maybe a German Shepherd, very aggressive, the moment it discovers movement, it probably is trained to start backing and run after what it is that you know, is moving there, all right? Same if it's a Rottweiler, okay? You know, so um, that's exactly how the Python watchdog module behaves. When you set a Python watchdog, you're telling it to watch the environment you're making it to watch, all right? So you're either asking it to watch a file, watch a folder, or watch something on your desktop, all right? Or somewhere, wherever it is in your system. The moment any change happens, I want you to respond. So there are two key classes inside of the Python watchdog module, inside of Python watchdog library. So if you can, you can really call them, well, so I, I think I should call them classes, all right? So there's the observer class and the event handler class, all right? So the observer, like I told you, is what observes the environment. What should I be looking around for, all right? What's, what's, what could happen? And then the event handler is, so in the events that I notice a movement, what should I do? Those are the two things, all right? So as usual, we're going to first import our necessary libraries. Um, we we'll import OS, we we'll import Sys, we we'll import time. And yeah, one of the reasons why we import this time library in Python is that we use it as the basis to either um, set a timer, all right, or to create a break or to create like a clock, an internal clock that our program has to observe. Okay, let me give you an instance of how the timer app um, works. So let's say, for example, I want to just print out the number zero to nine on the screen. So I could just run a for loop like this, say for I in range, all right? And I put nine here. What do I want to do? Um, print I. So when I run this right now, this is what's going to happen. So what I've just told Python is, okay, for every I, in range, I, I really want to believe that um, this is very clear um, because we've talked about for loops and how all of these things work. Okay, but if it's not clear, please let me know. I will be glad to explain it, but I'm just assuming and right, my assumptions can be very, 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 very wrong, all right? So, but um, I have explained this um, earlier in the session, many, many classes back um, that I is like an iterator. All right, so um, what I does is it looks into what it's going to iterate over, all right? And then it returns whatever it is you ask it to return. So I'm telling Python for every I in this object here, this range, and this range object basically is used to generate serial numbers, all right? So if I put range 50 here, Obviously, when I run it, it's going to generate 0 to 49 for me, all right? So basically, that's just what it does. It just generates um, serial number. So I'm just going to change this back to 9, and I'm going to run it. So um, it just runs from 0 to 8 and tells me, hey, this is what you asked me to print. Now, if you notice, it printed everything at once. But if I want to, um, if I want to, if I want to make it break and rest a bit in between each iteration, I'm going to use that timer to make this, uh, my for loop rest. 
a bit between each iteration. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this right now so that the time module will run. And then I'm going to insert this timer here. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so time, let me use time. Now there are many methods inside time, but the one I want is the sleep method. All right, so let me use time dot time dot sleep. Okay, now time dot sleep requires the number of seconds. All right, that you should delay that execution for. So let's say I want to delay it for just one second. All right, so what I'm telling Python is this: for every eye in this range. I want you to make the system take a break of one second and then print this for me. So just watch what happens when I run this same program right now. Watch one, two, three, four, five. So what's happening right now is that that time dot sleep that I've put there is just telling Python, hey, calm down, take a break for one second, right? So if, as you run the iteration, take a break, print. Run the iteration again, take a break, print. Run the next iteration, take a break, print. If I change this to two seconds, it's the same thing that will happen. It would run after every iteration to take a two second break. And then, so that's one of the things that we do with, and that's why that um, time module is actually like one of the most important modules in automation, sometimes even in machine learning, or when you're using Python for software development, because Sometimes you need, especially if you're if you're doing a game, you're building a game or you're building something. So you, you just need something that tells Python, hey, when this person clicks this, take a break, show something, maybe system is loading, all right? So for example, um, I, I can do the same thing here. I could just change this to one second and I could say for I in this first print um, system is loading. So I'm just use this system is loading, all right? And then run. So yeah. So it just skips. Um, it's just that's just basically what what this time module does, all right? So um, yeah. So it's it's finished running. Now let me just delete this, and then so we'll go back to. Our, our libraries. So I imported OS as usual because I want to interact with folders, all right? Then I imported sys, I explained this module um, because I may need to refer to one or two path variables inside of the app I'm building. Then time also is just so that whenever I think I need to get Python to pause because of maybe something, maybe processing or whatever, I, I need that then shoot till because I want to use high level operations like cut, copy and paste, all of those. Yeah, you can do that with OS because OS interacts with all parts of your, um, your system shell. All right, you can do that with OS, but then I prefer to do that with the shell utilities because it shells, the shell basically refers to the external part of your, your system that handles all those operations. Those mundane operations, copy, cut, move, you know, stuff like that. So that's what this um, this all this activities does. Then from this watchdog class called observers, I will import this class observer, and then from this one too called watchdog.events, I will import this file event system handler. Why? Because um, there, it's just um, it's just file event systems that I want to handle. There are other events that you can handle. So let me just use this from watch dog. Dot, sorry, not version. Dot events. All right. Let me just import. And just show the other things that are possible. So I can just import only an event that shows me when a file is moved or when a file is, when a directory is modified. The directory is like a folder, all right? So um, I could use, you know, regex matching or any of them. So but I just wanted to show you there are a lot of events that we could use. But because I'm trying to monitor a file, all right? So that's why I use this file system event handler, okay? So 
The next thing I'm going to do right now is I'm not going to create the functions that I need to handle the events. Now, um, I, could, I could hide this, let me see, because right now I shouldn't be talking about this, uh, but I, I just wanted to show you what it looks like. And the sad thing about Python is that if I want to do this, which is what I should have done next, I will have to, especially if they involve functions, go ahead like one one cell above it to create those functions, and that's the way Python is. Um, I don't know why it's like that, but hey, we have to manage Python, all right? So, what happens is um, now that we have declared what we want, the next thing we should do is to initialize each of these, all right? That's a normal thing we we'll do. When we call in a class, we should initialize that class. All right, that's that's the normal thing. Um, I, I don't know if Rowan has you know taken time to follow our series on the object-oriented programming in Python, and if you haven't, I, I we took like four or five Saturdays to look through um, the process of object-oriented programming. So I would believe that it would help you a lot. You know, if you look at that um, those videos. All right, so. I'm just telling um, Python that I want to create an observer. That's what I'm doing here right now. So the, the method inside this observer um, class that I'm going to call right now is called the schedule method because that's the way I'm going to schedule the observer. I'm going to just let Python know that, hey, you know, um, I want you to. Um, just wake up. I want you to start observing. Now, when you, if you look at this schedule method, you'll see that the the parameters that it requires, all right, are um, so. Let me just open another one and okay. Sorry, I'm not really that so much. Okay, so let me just open um, this observer again. So observer dot schedule. This again. So observer, I'm just trying to get, and that's one of the things that annoys me with the IntelliSense sometimes it can be very, very slow. Okay, so but let me just use schedule, I have just type it schedule. And I would, and I, I, I'm trying to get this intelligence to run so that it's, well, it has its own plans. I don't know why it's been very slow. Okay, so, but it's, it's supposed to bring out um, everything, every of the parameters inside of this. So let me just, because I was trying to get those parameters out and um, it wasn't just coming out. So. Uh, just delete this. Okay, well, um, the parameters that it requires are uh, the first is the file system handler. All right, that's the first thing it requires as a parameter. The second is the path of the file. All right, and then the third is whether it's recursive or not. Recursive means that do I want it to also monitor the subfolders in that path, in that folder. So for example, in that folder that we created, which is pi auto new. Now, if I had set recursive equals to false, what this watchdog will only be monitoring is probably if a new file was created. So maybe I just create a new text file, all right? Or a new Word document. But if, I set recursive equals to true. I'm also telling Python that I want to monitor um, everything that happens also inside of the subfolder, all right? So that's what that recursive equals to true or false means there. So um, the first thing I'm going to do right now is to um, set this handlers, all right? So, my file system handler, um, which is the event handler, 
uncreated, um, I want it to run this function here called file created, all right? And on basically what this function is doing is once it's called, it just prints out file created. That's just what it does, okay? So same thing for this other one. When a file is deleted, just print file deleted. When a file is modified, any form of modification at all, print file modified. When a file is moved, print file moved. All right, so these are all the methods that are available inside of this um, file system handler that we imported here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this right now. And then there is also a method called on any event, which is like a brackets, all right, method. And when that happens, I want it to call this function called what WTH, like what the heck happened. Okay, so that's what happens. That's the function here. And what the heck happens just generates um, somebody calls the police. It's just a you nonsense know, script just for fun. Okay, so I'm just going to um, run this right now. And I'm going to run this. So when I run this, yeah. So it's telling me that my observer has not been defined. So let me define my observer. Okay, so um, let me, sure it's not just only the observer that has not been defined. Okay, so, um, all right, all right. So this is what I'm going to do right now. Um, let me just create a new cell right now and I will declare my observer. Okay, so oh, let me just declare it inside of this place. Uh, where's my observer at? Okay, so home, uh, sorry. Uh, okay. okay, so, um, let me call this my observer equal to an instance of my observer class. Oh yeah, I think that was why it was not clicking the first time. Okay, so yeah, so let me cut this off and put it in this place. Okay, and so, uh, let me run this. Great. So I have initialized my observer class. Then the next thing I also need to do is the event handlers class. I think that's why the intelligence was not working. So my FSH will be equal to an instance of my file system event handler. All right. So we're good. So now this observer.schedule should be able to, um, if I if I insert another cell here and I put that observer dot, it should come out now. Aha, okay, that was why the observer intelligence was not working before because I did not declare I did not instantiate here for the, the objects, all right? Okay, so yeah, so that was why that error happened. Now uh, let me just delete this. Oh no, I deleted valid code. Where is my MJ? Okay, okay, so um, now I can now run this. And remember, observer.shadow requires um, three, let me just add one more line for that so that I can show the intelligence. So observer.schedule and it requires, yeah, it requires the event handler, in which case the event handler is my file system event handler, which is FSH. It requires the path, in which case the path is, oh, I have also not declared the path for the file. So I'm going to declare that right now. And it also requires um, this recursive, whether it's true or false, all right? Which I explained recursive means it's 
um, has to start monitoring um, um, whether there is a subfolder or not. So because I'm monitoring a folder that a directory that has a subfolder, then I'm going to use recursive equals to true. So um, here I have my observer sets. Uh, okay, so let me just delete this because I just used it to show example. So now um, I have my file system handler, which is this one. Then my path is the one that I have not declared yet. So I have to declare, remember I have to declare the path that I want um, the system to monitor. So let me just declare the path here in this place. So path equal to, and I will just come to this place and copy uh, this. So let me, let me copy the address, okay, as text. And I will come and paste that here. All right. So I'm going to make it a raw text so that my system can read it. Okay. So this is my path. All right. So now, um, yeah, so I have my file system handler declared, which is this. Then I have my path and I'm also telling Python to monitor this. So on created, I wanted to run this. Um, on, on deleted, I want you to run this. When you modify the file, I want to run this. And when I move a file, I want to run this. So I'm going to run this right now. A uh, file created is not defined. Oh, I've not run this. Let me run this. Okay, so I've run that function. You notice what I told you about Python? Though that um, it, it, I, I will run this stuff after I have created the function, it still requires me before I can successfully execute this code to have declared the function above and run it. So now I'm going to run this here yeah, and we don't have any errors anymore. So what is happening right now is I have initialized and set the parameters then I'm now going to use this observer.start to start up the observer, all right? So I'm just going to run this. And then you'll notice I told um, Python, once I click this, I want you to write this monitoring in progress, all right? So whatever happens here um, would show, whatever, whatever is happening in the folder will be reporting here in this console. So. What I did was to tell Python, okay, so while this is true, which, and while true is just, it's a programming sentence to just say on, you know, it's just like saying, while Aziz is a man, <laughs> which he always is. So, I mean, it means that if we use that while Aziz is a man to run a program, it means that that program will just continue running in perpetuity because Aziz is always a man, all right? Unless there's some time as this is a woman and we don't know. Okay, but I, I think as this is always a man. So while as this is always a man, run. All right. So um yeah. So that's that's what's happening right now. So we're saying while well, true, um, every time the system should um start executing, which is right now, it should take a break of one second. So rest for one second, check again, rest for one second, check the folder again, rest for one second, check the folder again. That's what this is saying. And the only time an exception is going to happen is when there's a keyboard interruption. Now, there are different kinds of exceptions. Again, we talked about all of this a while back, all right? So what we're saying is whenever there's an interruption from keyboard, then stop the observer, all right? Observer does join is just like a way of just, you know, putting the whole process in motion. So let's now see whether these functions that we created are actually working. Remember, when a file is created, we are telling um, we are telling the observer to output what is happening inside that file. So um, I'm going to try to create a file inside here, like a new text file. So when I create that file, all right, let's see what happens, what our observer is reporting. Oh, file created. So you see, um, because we told uh, the system that whenever we create a file, 
print file created, all right? So let's delete this file that we just created. And then let's just delete it. So let's see what the observer is telling. Oh, file deleted, you understand? So what if we, um, we come back to that folder, create a new file, all right, which is this, and then change the name to maybe Ruan, all right? Let's see what happens to observer. So you'd see that it says we have created a file, all right? And we have moved it because we changed the name. That's, that's the way the system sees, you know, that action, okay? Now, um, so that's, that's basically what the observer does. It, it just observes, you know, and then runs what you tell it to run. So right now what we've done is we've told the system, okay, um, just do this uh, when you when you have okay let's let's even run let's let's run one more because we've not run this one that's what the heck happened so let me use that fsh dot um let me use on i have initialized this so shouldn't be a problem so fsh dot on i'm trying to find out why this is not running okay for um i'm trying to use okay I don't know why that is not happening, but there's this function that I'm trying to create, which is like a bracket. Okay. It's like a bracket um, on, on, on any change at all, all right? So it should just print out somebody called the police. That's what I wanted to run, okay? So um, now, what happens if instead of printing out things like file created and all of that, we actually want to now make some changes, you know? So let's say um, we want to run this in such a way that um, when somebody makes a change, all right? Say, let's say somebody creates a file in here. We want that this file that is created should either be moved or something. So we can actually um, tell Python to do that in a function, all right? And what would happen is we would tell Python, okay, we'll create a function that tells Python, um, when we run this, when we run this observer, all right? I want you to create um, a source folder which is pi class this. And I want you to create another destination folder, which is pi destination, all right? And then I want you to move, that's this um, sh, which is that um, shell utility um, module. I want you to move uh, from the source folder to the destination folder. This sh.move takes just two arguments usually, all right? The source and the destination. So let me call this one pi source so that it just makes the whole thing gel a bit. So um, now I'm going to define this, all right? And now I'm going to, yeah, this, this is a function on any event, okay? So as usual, I have define my observer, the shadow, to create its path and the path and all that. And maybe I should bring my path, let me bring this same path down here, okay? So that I can use that path in this, um, in this module. So 
this is my path. Then I have my file system handler. Okay. And this, okay. So yeah, or maybe I should just even run this so that I can now play with this. I'm sorry, I'm scrolling so fast. So let me just remove this instead. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this code right now. And then I'm going to now run this my observer again so that the watchdog can start. Okay. So um so it ought to tell me monitoring in progress. Let me let me just shut down. Where is that button? Okay, so let me yeah, interrupt the kernel. Okay. Okay, so let me restart. Yep. Start. Okay, so I had to restart that so that it doesn't clash with the first observer instance that I created. So I would import this again and I would create this as my instance of my observer. And this is my file system handler on the path. Then I will um, create this one. All right. And then I will now run this one. So remember that you can stop me at any time to ask me if what I'm doing, you know, and if it's if it's sounding gibberish, I <laughs> just let me know, please. Huh? No, right. I said, of course. Yes. <laughs> okay, so um, so what what I'm now doing is I'm reinitializing all of them so that I can run it with this separate code. So I'm just going to run this as my instance of observer. Then here, this one you said threads can only be started once. That was the error. That was why I had to restart the kernel. So I can now run this now. Yeah, so it's telling me monitoring in progress now. All right. So it's now waiting for me to do any activity in this um, file. Remember, the file that is monitoring is, let me just go here. Close this. Okay. So, um, so the path, the path that I did, I I told it to watch is this file called Pi Auto New. All right, and. Let me just, which is this, okay? So the system is watching this path. Mm -hmm. But now there's something I'm going to do and it's going to generate an error. I just discovered it now. There's a code I needed to change, but let me just do it. So um, the first is the source. And this is, this is it. This is what will make it generate an error because this source does not exist. If you notice, there is no file called pi source. If you look at my desktop, you know, there is no pi source, all right? So, um, and then, the destination to pi destination does not exist. So I'm just running this observer right now and you will notice what will happen. The observer is watching this pi auto new. So let me create a new folder here, a new file, right? I'm just create a new text file. Then let's see what happens to the observer. Aha, you'll see an error. And why is the error there? The error is simply because he did not find pi source or pi destination. So what happens if pi source or pi destination does not exist? That's when we have to do this to add this if statement. So again, I'm going to stop this kernel. Let me interrupt the kernel because I will need to rerun all the ones I need and then explain this if statement that was not existing, which made us get this error. So we're now telling Python that, hey, we need you to, um, let me change this to PySource so that we can have 
a uniformity in the code, all right? So I'm not telling Python that, hey, um, when something changes in this watchdog, in, in this file that we are watching, and this file can actually be your download file. It can be the file that your ERP reports, because like if we use an ERP or maybe Sage or something like that, they, there's usually a file where your downloads hit. So this can actually be that file where your download hits. So you want it to be that, okay, once you just run and spool the report in the morning, let the download hit this file. Once it hits this file, copy this file and send it to pandas, you know, something, you just want to do something, right? Anything. So I'm just um, doing, just showing you what's possible. Uh, there, there are no limits to what you now want to do, all right? So we're now telling um, Python that we want to move the documents from this file, which is the file where our ERP drops the reports when we spool it or something to this file. But we want you to check if the if this path exists, all right, then move from source to destination and print someone called the police, all right, to just notify that hey, there's a movement. But if not, we want you to make um, this directory, which is this one, create it as a folder, and then move from the source to the destination. But what if the, so I have to amend this code right now because it's not complete. So os.make directory uh, source, yeah, so I have to add this so that um, the system knows that if both source and um, destination are not existing, I have to make a directory that's created folder for the source, which is that py source. I also have to create for destination. Then I will now have to move what is in that source file, all right, to destination. Okay, so um, let me, um, let me now change this to where is okay. So I'm just trying to ensure that I don't have an error when I run the code. So I will have my source and my destination, and I have my move. Okay, so that means that. Um, that means that I will have to run a, a, a Python code too. So I'll have to add a code here that creates, uh, that, that moves the stuff. Oh, it's going to be a bit complex. Okay, so you know what I'm going to do to just remove the complexity from this? I'm going to remove this code that I added here. Uh, I'm just going to remove this line of code that I added here and I'm going to create this py.source, okay? Let me just create that folder on my desktop so that I don't have to make the code too complex. Just py underscore source, right? So then I would now, um, okay, so source exists already. Okay, okay, cool, cool. All right, so let me now um, copy this. I copy this now. And add that here, okay. And I will copy this and add that here. Then I would move this here to use that to initialize my, my variables, sorry. Sorry, okay. So let me now use that to initialize my, my um, this one here. 
no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this, this, and this. Okay. So, yeah, then I would create this as pi um, source. Right. Cool. Okay. So, I will now go back to the beginning and I will start again. So, I would run this import to bring all the models back inside. Then I would instantiate my observer class. Then I would also instantiate my file system handler. Then I would now come down to so this place will have plot twist and um, instantiate the function, all right? And remember, what I'm telling Python to do here is that um, once the, there's any change on any event at all, I want you to run this function called what's happened now. And this function called what's happened now um, actually is just to you know, move from the source folder to the destination and if the destination doesn't exist, you know, then create it, all right? So, yeah, that's it. Create if it I, if I it. might yes, go ahead, ask a question, go ahead, that please. I always thought path day, the, the path is, is it checking for the path that you declared on top day, um, right. the, the pi source? Okay. The if statement that you have there, if always.path. Oh, okay, 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 yeah, this, right? So no, uh, just just on top. Yeah, that's that's your, yes yes in your yes. function that you defined. Yes yes okay. yes. So uh, that part little, yeah is yeah. this one? It's this one that I okay. So it's checking for that one there. Yes yes yes. That's what I would check for. All right. So, uh, so so would I be correct in saying that you should actually check for both paths to see the source and the destination? Whether both is uh, is is created? It, well, yes, you wouldn't be wrong, but because I have put that um, part up there, all right, and okay, let me run this. Then I will go and try okay. what you just suggest. I'll try that right now, and then we'll see we'll see if it works. Okay. Right. Okay. So I, I will run this right now, um, and so I would now run this, and then I will start up the observer, and let's go to Pi Source and see whether. Um, okay. So, yeah, let's create a new full file. Uh oh, sorry. Let's. Okay, so you can see it has created the Pi destination, but where is Pi source? Did I just delete it right now? I can't believe that. Okay, let me just, oh, you can't find it again. I think I deleted it. I deleted it. <laughs> okay, let me just, um... oh, I moved it into, let me go back here. Okay, great. So, yeah, so this is by source. This is by destination. This is by automate, the one we were playing with before. All right, so um, this is by source now. Already we've created a new document on the inside of by source. Okay, and yep, we have an error. So I think, let me see, cannot create a file when that file already exists. Okay. So yeah, if os.part is that equals to true. OS, oh yeah, I think it, because it's created that destination. So let me close the kernel. Shuts down the kernel and 
then I will restart it again. So let me delete all these folders. Um, delete and delete and delete. Okay, so let's 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 do that again right now. So I'm just going to reawaken the kernel and I think I should reawaken it and clear all the outputs. So yep. Okay, cool. So let's go start from the beginning here. Imports all the libraries. All right. Then we instantiate the observer class, instantiate the file handler. All right. Then we come here, which is where we have this plot twist. So um, this is the source file, and this is the destination. So if os.path exists, which is this equals to true move um, from the source to the destination and print this else move, make the destination file all right and okay okay then move from source to destination okay so as usual um, we're going to, sorry, we're going to create the source here. New folder called by source. Then, then we are going to, okay, so right now source exists. All right, so, um, and that source is the path. Okay, which is this, all right? Yep. So, yep, that source is the path, all right? And so if, um, yeah, okay, so let me run this and run this and then start the observer. Okay, so now let's try to perform an action on this Pi source. So let's try to create a new file. So maybe a new text file. Then let's see uh, what keeps happening. Let's see. Okay, I think there's a problem in the code that makes it whenever I create that new text file, it moves the whole folder already into destination. Okay, that's that's what the code is doing. So you notice what it has what it does is it moves the whole directory. Oh yeah, it moves the whole. <laughs> yeah, that's what I told the code to do. I told the code to move the whole directory into. Oh yeah, I get it now. Okay, because um, what I was thinking I actually told the code to do was to move the new file that was just created into the destination. Okay, so, um, so yeah. So if I want to do that right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on file creation, I'm going to write a piece of code right now that will, that will, um, create a full a file all right and rename the file yeah that's what i'm going to write so i'm going to write a code that will rename the file right now so let me let me um let me interrupt the kernel and then the piece of code i'm going to write here inside this else because instead of saying um move first i would say OS dot create directory, which is the destination. Yeah, it's gonna create a destination. Then OS dot um, rename. Okay, so I need to go and run this. Ow. Uh, uh, 
Ow, 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 ow. Okay, so I just got a message right now that I need to <laughs> I need to I need to start preparing for the next class we're having, which is machine learning foundation. So let me just quickly try to run that code here. And let me just quickly change that. Where is that plot twist? Okay, so OS. Let me see if it starts showing right now. So OS dot rename. It should show. Okay, I'm actually. Okay, so um sorry, let me restart the camera and clear all outputs. So I'll start from the scratch. Sorry, I'm really like. Once the kernel is clear, I should have this starting from the scratch. I don't know why it's. Okay, so interrupt. Restart. Yeah. It's supposed to clear everything. So the fact that it's retaining this one is probably one of the reasons why it's not responding yet. So OS dot okay, let me have this, this, then I will have this here. So it's my destination file then. OS dot rename. I'm supposed to hear rename finally comes out. So OS dot rename. And then it requires the name of the source, destination. Uh, okay, so let me rename the file as. Okay, um, I could use another method. You know what? Um, run and as is, please, why not let me complete this code once I set up the class for Tom? Tom is supposed to start the class in the next 10 minutes. So let me just set up the class for him and I would, yes, I would send you, yes, I, I will send you the completed notebook as soon as I set up the class. I would I would send you the completed notebook, but um, apart from this rookie mistake that I just made right now, um, was there any other part of the class that was very like that looks like um, I was speaking a foreign language? No, no, <laughs> not at all. I eh? um, uh, everything was one hundred percent. There was not a problem. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm so sorry about this this code problem. You know, it happens I think like I think that's, I think that's one of what we are learning as well. So that when we run into problem, we we'll, we won't run away from coding. So <laughs> if, if you know for us, I say, yeah. <laughs> Funny enough, that's actually one of the sweetest parts of coding when you run into problems. Yes. Yeah. Because it's it gets to challenge you to ask questions. You know, like, okay, so what did I do wrong? <laughs> then you now get to see, oh, okay, so this is it. So I, I'm going to rewrite this and I'm going to send it to you guys as soon as I'm done. So, but you guys are going to be available for Tom's class, right? Uh, I, um, I'll go back to that. Okay, uh, okay, your boot program. camp, right? Yeah. They, they pay for for it because of us. So, oh, I see. And I wouldn't. Yes, yeah, yes. I see. I, I, I know, I know, I know. Uh, at least if I miss uh, Tom's class, I can I can quickly can watch, watch it. Yeah, it's not the best for me. I won't be able to ask questions. But right. at least, uh, yes. Okay, run. Tom's run class with... starting now in ten minutes. Huh? Yes, in ten minutes.
Okay. I'll, I'm going to join East class as well. Um, okay, great. Great. I'll, I'll see you over there right now. All right. Thank, thank you. you very much. Eh? All right. Then. Okay. See you. Bye.